everybody. Happy Tuesday, April 11th. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. We're and live at We're live at five. Five-ish. And you guys, Chris McCarroll's here today. The lightning thief, Percy Jackson, all that. Les Mis, you love him. We'll get to him. He's wearing shorts. That's how nice it is. <laughs> You're not going to see that, though. That's how Unless nice. he shows you. That's how know. nice it is in New York today. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Aren't you so happy we have a guest? And a great guest? Yeah, I know. Because yesterday we were kind of like flying like by the seat of our... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. So, is there any news? There is Beth? some news. What there happened? is some news. Well, we're going to have a new star in Kinky Boots. You know, we spell lightning wrong a lot at this site. It's at Light Night. It comes up a lot, and it just happens. So, anyway, he's in the Lightning Thief. We're going to fix that later. Yeah. It's just, it's just nice funny because I look very casual. Yeah. Do yeah. you have nice shoes on, though? They just can't see them. You can't see them. Uh, so, Panic at the Disco's Brendan Yuri. Yeah. Is going to be Charlie Price. So this is like super. Kinky this Boots. is like. Um, this is like super. I hip. can't wait to see what's. This say. is oh, very oh, hip for Broadway. Hip, this is hip. very hip. This is very hip very casting. Very hip. He begins on May twenty sixth. Uh huh. Replacing Killian Donnelly, who's been doing it for a while. Okay. Exciting. Yeah. I love a awesome. new star. We love a new Broadway star. Yeah, I'm really curious to see. I, you know, I, his name came out of nowhere. I had no idea he had any Broadway aspirations. I don't know anything about how this happened, but I'm excited. Do you feel panic? All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. That was not necessary. Um, well, Spamilton is a hit. I know. Not Hamilton. That's also a hit. You already knew Spamilton that. Spamilton. Is, but Spamilton is also becoming like an international hit. It's going wherever Hamilton goes. That's right. It's following so it's, it. First of all, it's moving to the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater, which is on 47th Street. A.K.A. the 47th Street Theater. Also a block from Hamilton. Right. So it's like, yeah. it's stalking it. It's stalking Hamilton. Yeah, totally. Um, and it's going to play L.A., it's already in Chicago and you. other it follows, cities. It's it follows Hamilton. Tour. So that's, yeah, that's what it does. That, okay, you already knew this, but yeah. other people... Well, I didn't not. know it was going to the 47th Street Theater. It's okay. very exciting. It's in the district. <laughs> that's right. It's in the district. You used to be near my side. That's no, true. It's, no, it's, it's coming right. downtown, but midtown. Okay. Yeah. Uh, significant other Yeah. It's closing, it's closing, but... next it's sun, Not this Sunday, a week and a half. Yeah. April 23rd, but it's going to the West Coast, and it will be part of the Geffen Playhouse. Oh. Playhouse's uh, season. Cool. They haven't announced dates, and they have not yet announced uh, stars, but that's right. exciting, and that's good for Josh Harmon, the playwright. So yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, Kristen Chenoweth. What she, about her? She never lets a holiday go by, you know? What holiday? National Pet Day. <laughs> Duh. Uh, that's I, today? We, apparently. I gotta get my Instagram. Cheno knows what's up, and she made us, it's just, we wouldn't normally report on this, but it's Kristen, you understand. What's it's she important. Do? She made a playlist. She made a pet playlist, oh. so like while you're walking your dog, you can listen to Hound Dog or whatever the hell she oh. put on there. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, speaking of Kristen Jenner, with her partner from when she hosted the Tonys was Alan Cumming. Correct. Correct. I'm just I'm just trying to link things for you now because yeah. Chris McCarroll's here. I'm trying to zoom through this important yeah. people. Um, okay, so remember when he was Club Cumming. Yes, when he was at Studio Fifty Four, he would like invite people to his dressing room and have. I was never drinks. invited. Drinks? No. Hey, maybe Alan, Chris what's McCarroll up? was. Perhaps. I would he was eight three years ago. Um, we love you. We love when you say things like that to us. We feel really good. Anyway, he's opening like an actual club coming. Right. So it was a thing. He, he called his dressing room club coming. There was a neon sign. I wonder if that neon sign will be in the actual club. And, I have no and now, uh, so it's they, it's going to a bar on East Sixth Street. Yeah, it was called it's, Eastern Block. They're yeah, which renovate is it. owned by who? I don't know. Anderson Cooper's boyfriend. Okay. I know. Yeah. Uh, does he have a name? Yeah, I forgot it. It's Anderson Cooper. <laughs> That's what his card says. I got it. Um, yeah, so it's gonna that's gonna close in August. They're gonna renovate and then club gonna, coming. Uh, real thing. Here's the renovation. Hanging that neon sign up. That's correct. And then they're gonna reopen. That's correct. Uh, that's no, cool. No, though. I will say Alan Cumming is also a former Broadway.com vlogger. Oh, I love that you're showing that uh, fact off. I am showing <clears> the fact that he didn't have club coming then because he was in a solo show. Anyway, right. but speaking of vlogs, see how I'm doing? See what I'm doing? We have a new Broadway.com vlog. You guys have been waiting for this. It's Laura Osnes. New with old vlogger because she's so a, cl she's she's a classic, she's classic Broadway.com vlogger. She's returning back. with a brand new vlog. Yes. What's with it called? The band. With the band. Hashtag with the band. Because mm -hmm. she is. Because she is at Bandstand. And the first, she just is so good Do Remember at that this. book when we were young, I'm with the band? No, I, I, I don't think I was young. It was all about groupies. Time, so yeah. It was not, not the same context dirty. as this. Um, this is not like that. First of all, she's fantastic. She shows us a lift call because I have to lift her up in the show. She takes us to City Field where Corey Codd sings the national anthem for the Mets, you know, as you do. It's very fancy. It's very insidery. She's so good at this. We love I feel Laura. Like we're sitting really close today. Anyway, 
I just have uh, to write that. Uh, Bianca Marroquin. Marroquin. I knew you were going to do The number one Roxy Hart, right? I, now I feel like I have to, I have to like lean away from you. No, Am I too okay. close? It's okay. <laughs> okay, Bianca Marroquin is returning to Chicago as Roxy Hart on May 1st. She's going to be there through July 2nd. I wonder how many times she's been there. A lot. Like a zillion. She's one of the like go-to. She's a go-to Roxy. Roxy Hart. Yeah. And she's so fun and so great. Um, the Actors Fund is going to honor... Get this, Sally Field, who's in The Glass Menagerie, you already knew that. Danny DeVito, who's in The Price. Hal Prince, who's the king of everything, plus Prince of Broadway Prince is coming. Prince of Broadway's coming, yeah. That's on May 8th at the Marriott Marquis. I wonder if we'll be invited. Probably not. Um, so it's one of the fancy luncheons. It's a fancy thing. That's a luncheon that all the nominees go to. Because um, cam- it's a campaigning plus spot. Plus, they get to be in a room with all those it's people. It's a campaigning spot. It's a campaigning spot. Uh, we have pictures of the anesthesia recording. You know what we should do this year? We should guess. Yeah, you don't have to. That's not important. I we guess. should Go do. On. We should have our own poll of like what's winning every race because after the election you don't have to be right. So we could just sort of. We don't have to be accurate. It can just be sort of what we want. Great idea. Thanks okay. for the brainstorm session in the middle of live at five. I just realized how little the polls matter. Now. Okay. Thanks for your help. Um, um, they're excited about Chris. Of course they are. I'm not trying to push I, you. I'm going to give you a bummer thing. To yeah. say. I'm going to give you one bummer thing, and then I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. Get your spirits lifted again by Chris, Linda Hopkins. Who. I know you don't know who she is. Let I me do. just tell you, they, they're very young. They're on Facebook. Linda Hopkins was a vocal powerhouse blues and gospel singer. Mm-hmm. And She's she, a Tony was a winner sh- from 1972 for Inner City. Okay, but then in 1989, there was this Broadway show called Black, Black and, and Blue, Blue at the Minskoff. Thank you. And she was one of the main stars. And she blew my 20s away. Right. She did, so she did, go, she did an amazing YouTube. song with Ruth Brown. It was like legendary. Just go to YouTube the and, and look, at that, Mabel. look at that Tony clip. Yeah, yeah, just look it up. Look, look it up. up. I forgot. They can look it up. You can look it up. She's so funny. She and was fantastic. R. She was 92. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Chris Full McCarroll. Life. 92. Yes. That's amazing. We've got the lightning thief here. Not the lightning oh, yeah, yeah. thief or whatever that's called. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Light night. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Chris McCarroll, come on in. <laughs> These sound effects. You guys are like my John Olivers of Broadway <laughs> <laughs> politics. I forgot how tall you are and how, how tall your hair is. Where am I? You're coming. It's a oh, little it's delayed. <laughs> Where am I? You're here. You're at Broadway.com. Oh, wow. How's life? Oh, it's So you're nuts. rocking shorts. You are, it's, I'm uh, rocking it's shorts. Are you excited about the weather? I am. I always like forward phrase with like the seasonal changes. I'm always yeah. like two beats ahead of where you should be. Okay, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like sunglasses, shorts, but yeah. like still the corduroy flannel. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the lightning theme. The lightning theme. At the Lucille Hotel. Yup. It's a musical extravaganza. Extravaganza. Yeah. How did you get involved in this? And th- this show has been around. Uh, is it? Was it? It's been around. It's been done before. Or it's been. There was like a one-hour version. Okay. Uh, that was really directed towards like uh, school groups and yeah. younger crowds. Right. And then right. they're like, let's beef this up. Uh, let's make it. Let's give it a second act. Let's okay. throw some more money at it, and let's have George Salazar and Chris McCarroll act fools in the center of it. I love and that. And let's see what happens. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of been done before, but not really. Right. Uh, and I, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about the Lightning Thief. I oh, knew really? nothing about okay, Percy thought, Jackson. Okay, this is because this is a thing. It's a big thing. But are you the right age to have been affected by this, or is I am the right age to you be affected are. So what by were you were listening to Broadway? I was just not reading. I'm not a good <laughs> reader, especially of nonfiction. I like reading articles, but not stories. Okay. Because every night, because when you're a theater kid, it's like half of your day is dedicated to stories. So right, when you so come you, home, the right. last thing you want to do it's is like, like I just want to live in reality a little yes, bit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I just want to watch the Kardashians for a second. You know what I mean? Yeah, because that's reality. Uh, uh, so, but it is a book series. It's a yeah. very popular mm-hmm. YA, is that what they call them? It's a ya, ya book, young, young adult, adult book. Adults. And that start started. Am I wrong? Am I, and there was a movie. You know, some movie. the movie. I've watched 15 minutes and I went, this needs to be put on pause and I moved on. I had, you know, I had a similar reaction to it actually, yeah. but I hear the musical is fabulous. And me too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this Percy Jackson guy. Who is he? Talk, um, let's fill people in because maybe they were all just listening to Sondheim as well <laughs> and not paying attention to the series. Let's fill them in. Well, for all the... And non- they all love you from Les Mis, obviously, all Les Mis. Them. This show is so much happier. Like, no one dies. We don't even say the word die. We say my mom vanishes. <laughs> Truly. Uh, can you imagine Les Mis if you 
just said everyone vanishes rather than dies. Oh my god, yeah. My friends are dead and vanished. Sure. Uh, what was the Percy question? Jackson, who is this kid? Oh, he's a He's mess. a teen, isn't he a teen? He's, uh, well, he's 12 years old in the first book. Oh. But, and this uh, is the first, this is based on the first book, right? Yeah. Like, Nick Deep is the name of the first book. Yeah, but yeah. Josh Colley, uh, he was already busy, so they had to, like, <laughs> up the, the, the age for me. Uh, I'm kidding. So we made Percy a little older because the whole book series, mm-hmm. like, I'm about the age he is, like, towards the end of okay. the series, so, yeah. like... Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's not a stretch. Twelve year old's not playing him, and he's supposed to have green eyes. And I don't have green eyes. I'm sorry. So you don't wear contacts. I don't wear contacts. <laughs> You're not method like that. <laughs> I'm not method like that. I'm more like you just gotta run with it. Suspension right. of disbelief. Is that what it's called? I think yeah, so. I think that's what it's called. But he has a lot of learning problems. He has ADHD. He has dyslexia, and he keeps getting kicked out of school. I think the author wrote it based on his like kid having those issues. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I know that. Yeah. That makes so sense. okay, so he's kicked out of school and what and then yeah. what? All What's these the, crazy things keep happening to him and then no one believes him. Okay. Uh and he keeps getting kicked out of school and then finally uh he crazy stuff happens and he ends up at this special camp that's for people who are sons and daughters of Greek gods. And there's this camp set up to keep them safe and like train them. But the big problem is is that the most powerful gods, Poseidon, Hades, and uh, uh, Zeus, aren't allowed to have kids, but I'm the son of Poseidon. So oh. then stuff starts going down. Stuff is going down. So I'm like, great, I'm the son of one of the most powerful gods, but then it's like... You're not supposed to exist. I'm not supposed to exist. Wow. And then Zeus thinks I stole his lightning, and I didn't steal it, but everyone calls me Hence the lightning the title, thief, the and you just called me the lightning thief or the when light you introduced night. me. Or the lightning thief. The lightning uh, thief. Yeah. But Percy Jackson, the lightning thief musical, but Percy Jackson is not the lightning thief. Okay, so it's a big mis- misconception <laughs> yeah. about him. Yeah. I'm sorry. Huge. I'm sorry. I, I, so that's actually the title refers to somebody else, maybe, in the plot. Maybe that's perhaps. what we maybe that's what, maybe that's what we find out <laughs> in those two acts. Maybe. But I spend two hours trying to convince people I'm not the lightning thief and then I walk around all day and people are calling me the lightning thief. I'm like, I just have to keep Defending myself. What's the music like? Uh, uh, the rock and roll. What's it's it? like rock, nonstop, like pounding, high energy. Uh, I shouldn't be doing it eight times a week. It's so like Panic high. at the Disco or something. It's, like, it's a lot like Panic <laughs> at the Disco. <laughs> Uh, but then there's, like, some, like, really cool, like, Caribbean-style, like, acoustic guitar on the beach songs. Oh. Like, there's a wide variety. Yeah. Um, and there's, like, some, like, hints at, like, music theater patter songs a little bit. It but up. it's all very modernized. Score. But it's a full... It's a full score. Full spectrum. It's a full score. For sure. Um, I, people are flipping out. I'm sorry. I'm okay, looking at the let's comments. read some of these. Kate said she was not emotionally prepared for Chris. Um, <laughs> Me neither. Uh, Jess, Jesse said, is the video choppy for anyone else? No, it's totally fine here. Um, Chris, Christina said, Chris's laugh is literally the best thing ever. Kate is living for this. You got a lot of girls following you around. Chris, OMG, G, 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 G. Uh, woo, Chris, hey, oh my God, your hair looks so good. I'm taking that compliment. Yeah. Um, but yours is nice, too. Do you blow yours? Uh, yeah, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chris, will you marry me? That's from Juliana, not from me. Chelsea said you're cute. Thanks, uh, Christina said she can't wait for it to transfer to Broadway and for you to win a Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot. I mean, there's nothing really that like meaty to chew on in terms of questions. Just a lot of people really excited. Uh, my computer is going to die. R.I.P. Uh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Be the part. Oh, we're like okay. back. We're back checking. Uh... Cast album. They want to cast album. All right, here's one. Elise, they love this. And you've probably answered this before on Live at Five. What's yep. funniest on stage Miss Happy Lay Miz? Do you have a nice fresh oh, one? Oh, Lay Miz? Yeah. That's over and done with. All right, Percy Jackson. Funniest okay. on stage Miss Happy. Uh, the Lucia of our town. What's happened so far? Oh, I haven't, we haven't even had enough shows for really good meaty stuff to happen. But I have a reversible belt in the show. And you, do you use both sides? No. 
But so my, on the wrong my way. sword is attached to it. There's like a little holster for my sword. Uh-huh. You have an actual sword. Oh, bronze. <laughs> I have a real sword. <laughs> and I pulled it out so fast that the entire belt reversed itself. <laughs> and so my holster is upside down and it's the middle of like the most dramatic scene. So I'm slowly trying to figure out like the physics of what just happened to my belt because the belt buckle is right side up. Right. Oh, but everything else is inverted so and I'm literally like doing this dramatic scene being like, what has happened <laughs> to my belt? Uh, and so I have a lot of like sword moments for the rest of like the finales, but I couldn't trust my belt with it, so I just set my sword down at the front of the stage. And in the moment, there's this big epic note where I'm supposed to go like, uh, uh-huh. bring on the real world. And I didn't have my sword, so I just like threw up like a, a point. <laughs> Because, like, I don't know, it's supposed to be a really epic moment. So I just, like, pointed to the sky uh, and said... It, it, that sounds like a good save. That sounds like it would be fun to see that. Uh, Sydney, do you usually go around in basically your costume? Is that something you do? Or? I mean, blue is my favorite color, sure. and I have a plethora of really lovely blue shirts that I love to wear. Percy loves blue. Oh, okay. So do uh, I. Yeah. Percy Jackson. Okay, I didn't know it was a Percy Jackson thing. Yeah. I'm getting sick of blue, though. I never thought I could get sick of a color. Oh, are you? Yeah, because I eat blue marshmallows every night. I drink blue Gatorade on stage. <laughs> the entire set is blue. My costume is blue. I'm like, if I need to just go home and like paint my bedroom orange. To like be as far on the color. Well, that's a complimentary color. Yeah. True. Other yeah. side. I'm I'm really big on orange now. Actually, I have kind of converted from blue to orange a little bit. I love a rust orange you accent. Love a rust. <laughs> in an outfit. <laughs> uh, oh my God! There's so many they, people. Just really like you. Is this your life? These people do they like always tweet at you and like? There's a um, lot. You have a lot. I mean, yeah. there's just a lot of stuff happening. What's your favorite song in the musical? And Sophia wants to know. I mean that finale. Sorry, and Sophie. Sorry, and Sophie. the hyphen. Yeah, you 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 come to this show and tell me if you've heard of a more epic finale. That the finale, finale, bring on the monsters at the end, is just like living my truest young adult self. You're, the, <laughs> you're living your truest YA yeah. self. And I like all the dreams. Like every time I get knocked out, I like go into this dream world, and oh. then it's like all ethereal and ambient and. Like UV lighting comes on, and we have like UV paint on the stage. Oh, it looks like I'm underwater, but I'm not. You mean like, like black light? That look? Mm-hmm. I like that. I had That's that cool. throughout my childhood bedroom. Black really? Light. Yeah, black yeah, light? Totally, I was all about black How light. How is your retinas? Totally, it was so good. What? How are your eyes? It's supposed to be terrible for you. Well, I didn't like live in it. I just. Would you just, just said you did. At night, you know, like have a moment. I was living my YA A self. black light moment. <laughs> I was living my YA self. Uh, my son is so excited to see this. Uh, oh my God! What's your favorite scene? I mean, we, well, come on, the finale is a favorite scene. Um, no, what musical changed your life? Chelsea wants to know. When you, oh. Les Mis. Well, I mean, that did change your life on but. paper for sure. It's like I'm not in debt. Uh, I would say <laughs> I'm so basic, but I'm I'm 26. Wicked. I saw that show, and when she. In the in the dance scene in the party. Oh, oh the, the dance! Like, could you know the dance? Have you do you do the dance? No, but like that's when I like. I think that's when I like sprouted a heart. I was just cold blooded till that moment, and then I'm like, this is what it means to feel something. Who was your first alpha bow? Joe Shans. Good one. Good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and like the piazza. Every show, every show I love, like okay. sitting in it. Okay. Uh, um, Changed my life. Uh, is there anyone? Cu- have you ever seen anyone cuter than you? Oh, have cute, I ever seen someone cute cuter question. than me? Yes. 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 There's a lot of cute people in this city. Um, people want to know if you want to sing anything. I'm assuming you don't, but uh, I don't know. Like maybe. Is there anything you just, like that has been in your head? You kick it out of your head. You want to like release it? Do you want to know a funny story? I was in the bathroom and I was singing. Uh, the bathroom. Yeah. 
Sometimes a day goes by, one whole entire day. And I was like really feeling myself and the acoustics in there because it's all tiled. Oh, yeah. It's very bougie here. <laughs> it's all tiled and then out comes Matt Roden. <laughs> and I'm like of all people. And you were doing like a full? Full blown. Vibrato. <laughs> like, like trying to tune my overtones. Like yeah, echoing. Yeah. You never know who's going to pop out of the bathroom you at Broadway.com. You have to be Truly careful. though. It's true. It's like a palace in here. <laughs> uh, I can't deal with all these questions. I want to. I want to do this. One. Do you want to do anything? Does do Cass pull any pranks things? on each other, or do you guys goof off a lot? George Salazar. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. <laughs> Lock your doors. George Salazar on the stage is a force to be scared of. That boy when. The audience is not looking at him. Don't be looking at um, him. Okay. He tries to he's gonna make mess with me you. laugh. He tries to make me laugh every time, and he's usually successful, but I am such a pro at the, the, the grimace. I call it the grimace, when you go to laugh, but you just cover your teeth, and then you go. You, that, that's you how give, you like, it? a little uh-huh. neck tension, and people uh-huh. are just like, what's wrong with you? But no one's like, you're trying, you're almost laughing. But you're not laughing, at least. <laughs> <laughs> So people think I'm crazy and, like, have ticks, but no one thinks I'm about to break. You're stifling a lot. That's good to know. Yeah. Because I have thought you were crazy. Cover your teeth. No, I know. Neck tension. Uh, if you could play any character in the show besides Percy, who would it be? Amy wants to know. Luke. Yeah? Yeah. Who's Luke? I'm going to come find out. I'm going to find out. You have to find, find out. out. You're uh, a very integral part of the story, if you know what I mean. Maybe he's the lightning thief? <laughs> Is he the lightning thief? <laughs> Do you still ride your scooter? Oh my god, it's almost scooter weather. <laughs> Is that a yes? Uh, yeah. It's been sitting in my living room all of winter. I've had to ride the subway. I'm so excited. It's almost scooter weather. Do you wear a helmet? No. Oh, Chris. I know, but... But your hair is really good. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ruin your hair, though, for safety. No, but, like, true, like, it seems like a joke, but, like, what would I... Everywhere I would go, it would... I would have helmet head. I know. It's already bad That's enough I, I arrive on a scooter. I can't <laughs> arrive with, on a scooter with a helmet on my arm, like a clutch. That is why I stopped riding a bicycle, for that reason, because my hair, you know... Why didn't you uh, just take the people, risk? people to me said, I don't want to ruin my hair. Josie said, What is happening to this interview? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you one thing, it's not ending, and it's supposed to end. So, you know what? We're going to wrap it up. Okay. Chris, you're a delight, as always. Oh, you. Uh, are you trying to show off your shorts? <laughs> it, it, he is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how wide angle this lens is. I think the, I think we got it. I think, yeah, we're good. Can I get uh, a sound effect? Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever you want. While you do that, I'm going to tell everyone, go see The Lightning Thief, uh, the Lucille Lortel Theater. When's it playing through? It's playing through May 6th. Right, okay. So you have like like another month or so. Yeah. And the yeah. finale is awesome. The finale is awesome. The whole show is awesome. Uh, they love you. They said don't leave. Yeah, okay. It's a lot. I'm not going anywhere. I think maybe we should just... have a 24-hour Christmas Carol channel on Broadway. Oh <laughs> just, they can just watch you. It's just like a little... Like, are you going to press any of those? Ice cream on my face. Is this a fart one? Maybe. Yep. <laughs> Nailed that logo. Keeping it classy. It's a good one. I love this. I want this on stage with me. They so when no one Target. claps, I, I just got I could buy you one. They have Target. Uh, Chris, thank you for stopping by. You are always welcome here at oh, thebroadway.com. And uh, everyone go see the show. And watch us tomorrow at Live at 5. We have another great guest coming. Although this guy is pretty hard to top. I feel so <laughs> caught up. Bye. Bye.